Hello and welcome back to another one of Four Cameras Camera Tutorials. Today we're going to learn how to use this 1971 Olympus FTL SLR camera. Um, this particular camera takes 35 millimeter color or black and white film, which is some of the easiest film that you can find um, at most major stores. Um, it's also really unique because unlike other Olympus cameras of the time period, this one uses the M42 mount screw mount lens. So it would be able to use a number of lenses that are not just Olympus Zuko lenses, um, but from other manufacturers as well from that time period, making it really versatile. And um, these lenses are very easy to find all over the place. So let's learn how to use this camera. So in order to change the lens, you would press this little button over here and you hold it down and then you unscrew it and it will pop right off, right? And it's called screw mount, right? Screw mount lenses because it's actually like a screw. As you can see, there's a thread in there. Um, and you can see that the mirrors inside and everything is all nice and clean in this one, which is really nice. Um, so in order to put it back on, you would just screw it back on until it clicks on all the way. See, and now we clicked and the button over here popped up, meaning that it's locked in and you're ready to take photos. So how do we use it to take photos? Well, first off, we have to load the back with film. So you would unlock it by opening this area over here see how it opens up and you put your finger away from the back and it pops open and you would feed the 35 millimeter film right the spool goes in here you would close this into the top or at the bottom of the spool I'm sorry and you would feed the spool around here the film goes into this little teeny it fil the film goes right into these little teeny um areas here and once it's nice and flush you would pull it a little bit see this you would wind it and then you would make it flush you would close the door until it locks and you'll hear it lock like that and on the top over here i'm gonna get a little closer on the top over here it keeps track of how many pictures you've taken so you need to advance it so you would press the shutter button. This is the shutter button. And you hear the shutter go off. That means that it took the first photo, it exposed the already exposed film, so it doesn't really matter right now. And you would keep advancing it. And you notice that it, it goes one step over, right? It's still in the orange, meaning that it's an area where it's gonna be already exposed anyway. You'll just keep taking photos until you get to the one. And now I'm at the one, so I don't want to take a photo yet. That will be my first photo on the frame that I know that is not going to be exposed by the light. So how do we use this to take photos? Well, number one, it has an, an inside light meter, right? Um, which helps you be able to cr create the proper exposure using, and if you have experience or you don't have experience with SLRs, using the aperture, which is the iris of the camera basically if I show you over here right you'll notice that the hole inside the camera gets bigger or smaller letting less light in or more light in and that controls the fuzziness in the background and what's being able to being taken a photo of when you take compose a photo but it also sharpens the photo right um so it's the field of, it's the focus right the field of the the f-stop so the other thing that you need to do is put a battery inside in order for the light meter to work so you would open up this container with a little teeny coin and you would pop your batteries in and once the batteries are inside you could double check to see whether or not they're working by moving this arrow over here with your finger down to bc and you would look inside the viewfinder and you're going to see a little kind of like a little arrow or a little needle and it should be able to move right if the battery is operating properly and to turn the camera on 
to keep the light meter on, you would just, you know, switch it to on and you're ready to take a photo. Now, don't forget to turn this off because if it doesn't go off, you'll drain the battery and you don't want to waste it. That being said, when this is on, you would look through here and you want to choose the correct aperture depending on your lighting situation or your how much of the background you want in focus, right? So 16, everything's gonna be in focus, but it's going to be a small aperture letting less light in, um, which means you would have to adjust your shutter speed, right? So here's the shutter. So we start at one one thousandth thousandths of the second, and then we would keep going higher, right? All the way to one second, right? Um, and once you select the proper aperture and shutter speed, right, um, you're ready to take your photo, right? So you would press down, you would focus the camera by moving this area here of the lens to focus it on your subject. And you would press the sh shutter. Here it was one second, so it was, a, it was opening the camera for a long period of time but it, you can actually hear the difference if I move it to one one thousandth of a second. And I, I, to go to the next frame, by the way, you would have to move your thumb on this up and then back, right? And that means that you're on the next frame, um, the next picture to take. And notice that the little arrow went to this new dot right above the one, which means it's on the second photo. And another thing I actually forgot to mention which is very important. Every film has its own film speed. So you would need to, over here, you would see a number and it would say, here it says 400. Um, so films with 400 speed, that would work. But let's just say you're, you're dealing with a slower film, like say 100, right? Film speed, right? You would move this little um, circle up. You pull it up and then you move it around. See how it moves the number of the film speed, which is on the film. And it goes all the way up to 1600, right? So that'd be really fast film. And then it goes all the way down to 25, which might be like an, a very old, you need a lot of bright light, sort of very slow film. Um, but most of the time, film is about 200, 400 and 200. So my go-to for Kodak Tri-X is 400, so I keep it at that. And inside there's, um, to compose your photo and expose it properly, you would need to use the internal light meter. So how do you use that? So basically there's a needle that's gonna go up and down when this is on, depending upon how much light goes through the lens. Now, what your goal is, is to switch the shutter speed and the aperture so that, and you would choose it according to how you wanna frame the photo, right? So maybe you wanna switch the aperture first and then select the shutter speed based on the aperture, right? Or the other way around if you're trying, and so that's like if you wanna maybe have a depth of field, like a blurry background and you wanna shoot with like four or 2.8, and then you select this, right, separately. Or if you're trying to film a race car, maybe going by, you wanna select 501,000 and then choose the aperture that works accordingly, right, to create the, the perfect exposure. And inside, there's not only a needle, so the needle's gonna be based on the light, but there's a little bubble needle that you need to move the aperture and the shutter speed until they align perfectly. And that means that the photo will be properly exposed when you take the picture. Now, another nifty thing about this camera is that you can set it up on the tripod, right? So there's a little screw down here that you can hook into a tripod and you can use the automatic timer located over here to take photos of yourself and friends together, right? So you would focus the camera separately. You would set the timer. So you would move this down and you would advance the film and then you would press this little button here to keep the timer going and then it will take a photo.
After that, um, what you need to do is to be able to rewind the film. So imagine now you went through all your rolls. So either 24 or 36 photos will pop up over here and you're ready to go. So you turn your camera off, right? By flipping the switch here and you wanna press this little button down here, see, on the bottom. And once that's pressed, you would wind the film back into the canister. And you do that by, sorry, by moving this little lever up and you get a little winder. And there's an arrow telling you over here how to wind, right? So you're gonna wind cl clockwise all the way, all the way, all the way, all the way, all the way until it clicks. And when it's done, you can open up, right? Unlock the film. And after it's unlocked, you could remove it and you're done and you're ready to take more photos again. Um, the other thing that I wanna talk about is that it can actually have a flash. There's a hot shoe. It's called the hot shoe on the top. You can just pop a flash on. Um, and to use the flash, you would move this dial until 1 60th of a second and there's a, there's an X there, right? And that tells you you can use the flash right with the camera. So you have to keep the shutter at 1 60th of a second and adjust the aperture and you're ready to take photos. So I hope you enjoyed this awesome tour through the classic Olympus FTL camera. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel to support our cause. Um, also feel free to subscribe to our Instagram at Forward Cameras, our Twitter at Forward Cameras, and please check out our awesome vintage camera, vintage store 